transition is the deliberate, coordinated provision of developmentally appropriate and culturally competent health assessments, counseling, and referrals to ensure successful transition to the adult health care system, work, independence, and inclusion in community life. My name is, is John Pletcher, and I've uh, been in a unique and privileged position practicing uh, pediatrics and adolescent medicine for nearly 20 years uh, of talking with, with many families and many youth um, about their transition to adulthood. And, and in thinking about transition and what we in healthcare can do, we often spend a lot of time thinking and talking about changing healthcare providers, and, and we even talk a lot about healthcare decisions, and, and we're really good at asking about school and if people are safe and able to access their school and, and even getting to, to college and work life, uh, uh, we've, we've gotten really good at. But the one piece of transition we often uh, don't spend a lot of time thinking about is, is engaging in community life, really enjoying your life. And, and certainly in the city of Pittsburgh and western Pennsylvania, as in many places that, that I've lived, uh, public transportation is a huge piece of accessing community life, of, of being able to get there. Uh, and, and what I find in, in talking about this with families is that often a lot of times families immediately begin thinking about safety and they want to protect uh, their young person who, who has a physical or cognitive disability. And so the idea of using public transportation uh, often becomes a roadblock or the initial barrier to talking about, well, what are our plans in terms of helping the young person access and, and enjoy their community? If you want to be independent, things are going to happen. You just have to learn to be proactive and, and problem solve. But my epilepsy, that's sometimes cause some issues because it's basically a blackout and I'll overshoot the stop I need. It, it was very scary. It was very scary, but Colin also needs to live. I can't keep him tied up in the house. You know, there's a lot more to life than having a seizure. It's not who he is. It's just a part of him. And you kind of have to trust him. It really all depends on what has happened. I might have called my mother and tell her that I had a seizure on the train, depending on where I end up. It took a while to ask him where he was, what stop he was at. Um, I was nervous. Um, I held it together while I wasn't really upset. We worked through seizures before and um, places when I wasn't around. Usually if he's sitting down, he's fine. So if he had to stay on the train, that was fine. But if he could get off, I was traveling anyway, so I was on my way to pick him up. Um, it ended up being safe. I was really happy that, you know, that, that he got there, he did it. People, if they try to talk to you, but I just put my music on to I don't have to listen to that. And then they try to sit next to me and I go, I don't want that. <laughs> and then they go, how are you doing today? And then I just block it out. It's easier if I just block it out. I don't tell them where I live, my phone number, like personal information. I was asking her actually something about conveying that information to a one of her friends and she said to me, I'm not going to say that. We're on a bus. This is public. This is private information. This is a public bus. And I was like, Mom, that's personal information and we're on the bus. She's like, oh yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah. I keep myself safe by choosing stops that I feel comfortable using. I use places that I may be familiar with. Additional tips generated by the youth of change. Keep belongings within your view. If possible, sit near the driver. Pay attention to your gut instinct. Be aware of your surroundings. Know where you're going and know who's safe to ask for help. Now 
she has come to me and through like self-defense or TV or different modes of that kind of thing has come to me and said, well, maybe I should have mace or maybe I should have a gun or to protect myself. So in her simplistic view, those are things that protect you against unknown, unwanted violence or unwanted attack. But in our case, we've decided that it's probably she would be the one to get hurt. But the idea is, is create separation and get away from the thing. Whereas if she had a weapon in her hand, be it pepper spray, be it mace, be it taser, be it a gun, she, she would stand in that spot. It's like, okay, we're equal, we're going to stand here and fight. And that's not what we wanted to convey. It was get away from the situation, get out of the situation. So she doesn't need to equalize her. It's more of learning through experience. The travel trainers taught me to ride the bus. And the, the big thing with the travel trainers, what I liked about it was, is they did not draw it out, you know, and worry that every step was planned and plotted. She was given a framework, and do you have questions? What do you understand? What don't you understand? Okay, we're going to try this. And they gave her freedom. Right, like so... They, they, it's, would it's follow, they would follow her. They weren't right there sitting next to her going, okay, now do this. They followed to see what she would do. Right. right. Now, they were always there, but they, they were not physically, so she had to make some decisions along the way. Well, when I learned to ride the trolley, my dad would just tell me what trolley to get, where to pick it up, and uh, we'd always do one trial run together around what time I would have to get it on the actual day I'd have to be wherever. So that's how I learned to ride the trolley. As, as a healthcare provider and as healthcare providers in general, I think we really need to stay attuned to these issues and be very comfortable and prepared to talk about uh, issues around safety, safety on public transportation and, and safety threats that might occur in the community uh, when we're talking about transition with our, with our young adult patients and, and, their, and their supportive parents. Uh, one thing uh, that we can really do is help balance out that idea of risk and reward. That idea that with going out of the community, there are certainly safety threats to be aware of, but at the same time, the rewards of meeting those challenges and overcome those challenges uh, help get to a better place that improves overall safety and improves productivity and ultimately helps to sustain health. My one big thing is you have to give them the room to fail. They have to be allowed to fail at some things so they can realize that everything doesn't fall into place for them. By little failures, they then build their own character, their own confidence, to be able to tackle bigger things.